welcome to a what I what we ate video. We decided to do one together, and we're actually eating a lot of the same things today, so it worked out great. I'm so excited to be uh, on this side as well because uh, <laughs> I'm always watching, and I'm always watching a lot of people, and I'm very rare uh, in front of the camera lately. But you're so good. I'm so good at it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so uh, yes, so we're gonna go through the breakfast of Michelle and through the breakfast of mine. We can go through all our meals, yeah, yeah so you can see. Um, and we're gonna do it as best cinematographically as we can. So we both love to start the day out with juice, even though we like to have a little bit different kind of juice. I like grapefruit, I like carrots, I like citrus, while Michelle likes all lots of greens and other things. And we just want to make sure that this is enough for everybody, as well as for the little ones, so he can have some sips, right? Oh, so good, huh? You want more? <laughs> and I'm starting normally my breakfast with the sandwiches, and you can see my homemade bread right here. I always use a butter on it, my favorite is the Earth Balance. And I'm putting some avocado on top of it with a salt, which actually it's substitution for the uh, soft boiled egg for me. So yeah, this is the earth balance that I use every single time. The other version is to put some tomatoes and some nutrition yeast on it. And there's the kicker. The last piece that I'm gonna do is with a sauerkraut. And this sauerkraut is actually amazing. It's homemade and delicious. I start with a chicory normally, and chicory is a substitute for coffee, and actually tastes like coffee. It's amazing, it's actually um, very good for you, it's healthy, it's full of potassium, it's full of good, good, good herbs that actually are helping you instead of poisoning you like coffee. This is, you can see how it looks, it's actually so similar to coffee, and here we go. I always use some sugar in with it and of course some soy milk or almond milk, whatever I have on hand. And check out this color, it's exactly the same as coffee and you can actually go for it and get unaddicted from coffee by using that. I started eating with some sauerkraut. I always try to have a couple tablespoons of it a day. I don't put it on my sandwich, but I like to have it. And I'm making some avocado toast as well, just a slightly different version. I'm using some avocado, some raw garlic because it's anti-inflammatory and really good for immune boosting. And then I'm putting in as many veggies as I can into this avocado toast. I'm using Ezekiel bread, which is a sprouted grain bread. It's just a little bit healthier option. I'm putting things like cucumbers and some spinach and then diced up tomatoes, nutritional yeast, salt and pepper and a little bit of chili flakes on there mm, so so good mm. it's really good I feel like with a kid we eat in in like shifts <laughs> it's very rare that we eat together so we wanted to sit down and talk a little bit about um, especially if you're new to the channel what our kind of vegan journeys are, have been, and where we've come from. When I first met Chris, the only vegetables that he ate were tomatoes and pickles. Sauerkraut. Oh, and sauerkraut. <laughs> so I've been vegan for over 12 years. You have been vegan for how long? Um, five. Five years? Five yeah. years, maybe. And to be honest with you, like, I am like, vegan in and out, I'm definitely a vegetarian all the time, since like five years or whatever, I don't remember actually. Like I think it's been more, six years actually. Six years, yeah. yeah. But just recently I started being like a pure clean vegan, because I found finally a substitute for my, for the one thing that I was always, always craving unfortunately, which was cheese. And then I know that yeah, for a Yeah, you stopped milk and eggs like Oh yeah, like years, right away, years. yeah, yeah. The, the eggs was occasionally still. You know, it's mostly cultural thing. Yeah, totally. If you think about it. Like, Poland, where I'm from, and the same as with Germany and a lot of Europe, meat is like very crucial. Like all the sausages, you know, all the salamis and all the like cabanos, what we call it, which is like a dried sausage, very skinny one and things like this. It's like what you call it here, like a beef jerky, I think. But it's- But way better. <laughs> oh, way better. I mean, oh my gosh. I think that's such a good point. I think the reason we eat the way we eat, no matter where you're from, is a huge part of it is cultural and what we're exposed to as children and what we're exposed to just from our parents' way of eating. That creates the patterns that we normally have for eating. So when you start to break that, it's kind of difficult and it's a struggle because it's so ingrained into your system. We both watch Earthlings and that, I've never seen her crying that badly in my whole life. I'm like, this is, this is crucial. Tomorrow I'm changing the gear. And then a lot of people on the ship that we knew, our friends, were already kind of you know, listening to what Michelle is saying. And so we all, as a group, we decided to go yeah. vegetarian for like a week. And yeah. it was like, hey, let's see what's gonna happen. Let's see what she says is correct, <laughs> right? <laughs> so me and acrobats, which acrobats you think like, oh man, muscles, we need like freaking meat and everything like that, right? No, they went for it too. I think it was like a third or second day. Me and my other friend, we have this like a scales come up of our eyes, like a film 
got take out and I will never forget this it was a week later I imagine the taste of the beef because you know you're eating all this life so you know how, exactly how it tastes and I'm like nah I'm gonna go for veggie and since then I, will, I never came back to the beef never ever ever the chicken wasn't an issue for me at all I feel like when you learn more of the knowledge or the why behind you why you want to make a change then it sticks it's likely to stick more and you have a lot more um, understanding and knowledge of why you made this change now than, than you did originally and and it's something that just becomes your way of life. The cheese was the big issue and I know for a lot of you guys I mean like you cannot imagine your life without wine and yeah, cheese or addictive. pizza or like yeah there's the queso soda. morphines in it which you probably have heard but it has addictive properties within the cheese and it's a hard thing to give up for sure. But there's a, two things that I want to say one your taste changes mm -hmm. And then suddenly you just don't need this anymore. It's the same as like with meat. You see the meat and you can imagine like, how can I not eat this? But then when, as soon as you break that little point, mm -hmm. then your taste changes and you just actually don't crave it anymore. It's automatical. It's like you change the angle basically. Yeah, and you, it's do like you, you don't even look back. A lot of the weight loss clients that I, that I coach, they come back with these revelations all the time. You know, I thought I really wanted to go and have this greasy burger and I had it and it made me feel sick. Or I thought I really wanted these you know, whatever, and I just, it didn't do what I thought it was gonna do, and I just feel healthier and more awake yeah. and alive, like you were saying. Yeah. For me, I've never turned back. Obviously, it's a huge passion of mine. I love to eat this way. I feel clear-headed and bright and um, healthy, and Chris wanted to say, but he had to go take care of Eli. He just maintains this natural weight now, and I just think that's so awesome. It happens to so many people when you switch over to having more plants. There's lots of different ways that you can have and kind of eat a vegan diet. His way is a little bit different than mine, but we can still find a middle ground. Um, so I'll leave you with that thought and enjoy what we ate. We had a couple snacks throughout the day, like some fresh fruit, but for our kind of early dinner, late lunch, we ended up doing lots of potato french fries, and we just popped these into the air fryer. I made these cute little cutouts for Eli, but he really wasn't that impressed. <laughs> While the potatoes were cooking in the air fryer, I decided to make a little bit of a cheesy sauce. So I made that with more potato, sweet potato, carrots, and then I put a little bit of cashews inside of the blender, some lime juice, turmeric, salt, garlic salt, a little bit of water, and some sriracha, and blended it up. If you haven't noticed, I like things to be a little on the spicy side. And it's my turn now, and I love my veggie burger. I found this veggie burger called Beyond Burger. Here you can just see what am I gonna put inside. It's a full long, it's a supreme burger, so it's not just like a little ingredients here and there, but you have garlic, mushrooms. This is that vegan cheese that it's not so great when it's not toasted, but when you toast it, it's a little bit different story. Here we go. The burgers are called Beyond Meat Burgers and they're one of the best burgers I've ever had in my life to the point of addiction. Check this out. Looks totally like meat. Oh my gosh, that's scary. Anyway, here we go. So there's some onion, there's the burger, there's also some lettuce and some spring mix of the greens, polished pickles which are the best, mustard, spicy sauce and of course ketchup. Push it down, switch it and it's ready. Check this baby out. Ah, the best ever. I always try to get in a really large salad at least once a day. So I made this fresh herb dressing with these greens from the greenhouse. I used um, cashews again. I used fresh parsley, thyme, and dill, and just a little bit of salt and pepper, lemon juice, and a little bit of water. And it becomes this really creamy dressing. I ate it over a really large salad with raw broccoli, um, some red cabbage, lots of mixed greens, and tomatoes. Eli had a little bit of what we had, plus some blueberries, and some pasta that I made that has zucchini and spinach mixed in. This is the cheese sauce, and he was so not impressed with my stars. Oh, look how cute. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> All right, well, look you at win those some, stars. you lose some. They're really cute. They're so cute. We love having an early dinner together as a family. It's a really wonderful tradition that we try to stick to as much as we can. Okay, so 
we hope you guys liked that video and that you got some ideas of what to eat. And we love eating this way. I yeah, think. we do. It feels really good and we really love it. And if you enjoyed having both of us in the video, we just did a couple of videos, a series on quarantine, easy quarantine cooking. I'll leave it down in the description below, but it's a lot of live videos showing you how to make some meals. And I know that people just love this little guy. But what also is really cool is that what we love to do also, yeah, we're eating pretty good and healthy, but we love to inspire other people and we love you guys to eat healthy as well. When we see changes in our friends and our family, we have like tears sometimes yeah, in our eyes. Yeah, it makes me We're so happy. Up, I really so love really helping cool. people find or turn that light bulb on and start to feel better and eat healthier and have some ideas and stuff like that. So that makes yep. me, really gives me like a fire inside and I know that you feel the same because yeah. it's a way that we can help people and I really, really like that. So anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more videos with both of us in it, let us know in the comments down below and have a great day yeah. and eat some good food. Eat some good food. Ciao, ciao. Okay, bye-bye.